Hello everyone, welcome to another video. Today we are going to talk about bad debt expense under direct write-off method. In the last video, uh, we covered about the bad debt expense by using the allowances method. And in that video, we uh, try to discuss how we can create the allowances uh, for uncollectible accounts by using income statement approach and how we can create the allowances for uncollectible accounts by using the balance sheet approach the description uh, in the description of this video i will provide the link of the previous video if you really don't know about the allowances method so you can watch that video but today we are going to talk about direct write off method and bad debt expense the direct write off method expenses bad debts when they are determined to be uncollectible. For example, if you have 10 invoices, I mean, say 10 customers, maybe out of 10, one customer is dead, or maybe he has closed his business, or maybe he is declared bankrupt by the court. So maybe it is sure you are sure now that you are not going to collect the money. So here we can use the direct write off method to record the bad debt expense now here there are a certain notes which is uh, which are really important the first note is uh, this direct write off method is not acceptable under gap because it does not match revenue and expenses when the receivables and the write off are recorded in the different period in other words simply it violates the matching principles you know as per matching principle we have to record all the expenses relevant to the revenue in the same accounting period so that is why if you have recorded the sales in one period but you are going to record or you are going to write off the bad debts in the in another accounting period so what will happen so it will violate the matching principle and i will talk about this concept in more detail so then they're telling you know this method is used for tax purpose only not for the financial reporting it doesn't mean you cannot use for the accounting purpose. Yes, you can use, but there are certain exceptions. So let's go into detail. So here we have another note. So a small company can use this direct write off method, provided that if the difference between uh, uh, between the direct write off method and the allowances method is immaterial. So in short, if you feel either you will use allowances method or uh, direct write off method the difference is very small it is immaterial so in other words materiality principle is used as an excuse to violate the matching principle you know as per materiality principle all the information is considered material if its omission or misstatement can influence the economic decision of the user so here we are using materiality principle as an excuse to violate the matching principle now let's move to the double entry what entry we will pass when we use direct write off method and as i told you when you are sure uh, your customer is not going to pay the money so at that time you can uh, pass the double entry to record the bad debt expense only at the time of a write off so this entry you will pass so what entry you will pass you will make the entry debit bad debt expense account and credit will go to account receivable so if you want to know about allowances because under allowances method entry was different okay so uh, you should you should know about the allowances method but here as i'm talking about only the direct write off method so that is where this entry you will pass uh, under the direct write off method when you are sure your customer is not one or two pay so what is the entry debit bad debt expense credit account receivable so let's have a look what uh, will go wrong uh, if you will, you know, pass this entry by using direct write off method. So here is the point number one. This method does not involve a reduction in amount of recorded sales, only the increase of bad debt expense. I mean to say here, when you will pass this entry, it is not going to uh, hit the amount of sales. The sales amount will be unchanged. Only what, what will happen? Only your expenses will increase. For example, a business record a sales on credit of $10,000 and records it with a debit to the account receivable account and credit to the sales account. After two months, 
the customer is only able to pay eight thousand dollar you know the sale was of ten thousand dollar but just you receive only eight thousand dollar so the seller must write off two thousand dollar it does so with dollar two thousand credit uh, to the account receivable account and debit will goes to the bad debt expense account so thus the revenue amount remains the same because revenue is not going to change revenue amount will be the same the remaining receivable is eliminated and and an expense is created in the amount of the bad debt so you should remember here whenever you record this entry it will not affect your sale the point number two the direct right of approach violates the matching principle under which all costs related to revenue are charged to expenses in the same period in which we recognize the revenue so this is the matching principle you know under matching principle what we will do we have to record all the relevant expenses uh, all the expenses relevant to the sale in the same accounting period okay what if you recorded as i told you earlier you are you have recorded sales in different period and expenses bad debts expenses in another period so in the first period when you recorded the sales your uh, your profit will be overstated because you don't have uh, you didn't recognize any expense but in the second period once you will recognize the bad debt expense by passing this entry what will happen your profit will be understated then this method also delays the recognition of expense related to the revenue so yes of course this uh, is the same example which i gave you uh, because if you recorded sales in one period but you are going to record expenses in another period so it means this method also delays the recognition of expense related to uh, revenue so here we go now we have here a few additional entries uh, which you should remember uh, when you deals with the receivable so at the time of sale what entry you are passing so you will pass debit receivable account i made to say customer account and credit goes to sale account at the time of sales return i'm assuming here we are not creating any allowances for sales so what we will do we will make debit sales return account and credit will go to receivable account and at the time of collection from receivable so what entry you will pass debit goes to cash account and credit goes to receivable account and here at the time of bad debts write off like when you are sure your customer is not going to pay the money so you have to write it off those uh, receivables from the financial statement and you need to pass this entry debit bad debt expense account and credit receivable account okay and this entry just we learned above so note when you write off a particular bad debts it has no impact on expenses uh, sorry it has impact on expenses because uh, uh, here you record the bad debt expense it means at the time of write off it will affect your expense your expense will increase and your profit will decrease sometimes you know guys what uh, hap what happens actually uh, maybe in the first period you have uh, written off certain bad debts maybe in the next accounting period so you might recover uh, those bad debts which you have previously written off so this is the entry you should remember at the time of recovery of bad debts previously written off so what entry you will pass when you recover the previous written off bad debts so first you need to do uh, you can pass two entries or one direct entry also so these are the two entries first what we need to do reverse the previous right of entry previous right of entry you have passed this entry like debit bad debts credit receivables you need to reverse that one so you will make it debit receivables and credit bad debts expense account okay and then what you will do you need to record the cash collection from the customer so because you have recovered the money so what entry you will pass debit goes to cash account and credit go to receivable account so if you want to pass one a direct entry what you can do you can see here here a debit receivable is there in the first entry in the second entry there is a credit receivable okay so maybe uh, it will net off and one entry you can pass by debiting cash and credit bad debts expense you know most of the companies uh, they can create a separate ledger uh, for the bad debts uh, with the name of bad debts recovered it's like an income account so they can make debit cash credit bad debts recovered account okay so it depends how you manage your chart of accounts 
so now here you should remember few to uh, two notes so at the time of recovery of bad debts previously written off so it has no effect on carrying value of receivable um, i mean to say because you make the debit receivable with the same amount and credit receivable with the same amount okay so that is why it will not affect the carrying value of receivable but it will increase the income yes because as i told you most of the companies they can pass this into a debit cash okay this will be debit and credit bad debts recovered account okay because this account uh, will work as a like an income account so, okay so once you will make this entry for the recovery direct entry so what will happen it will increase the income so i hope guys it is clear okay so now we have a short summary here this is also important so summary for this is receivable account guys you know uh, usually if you want to calculate the closing balance of receivable this is how we can calculate we we need opening a balance of receivable okay then you need you need to plus credit sales you will add then you need to less sales return okay you will minus then less collection from customers you will minus then less account receivables written off because at that time you passed debit bad debts credit credit you passed it debit bad debts and credit receivable so you will minus here mm -hmm. so this will give you closing balance of gross receivable mm -hmm. i hope guys everything is uh, will be clear to you guys okay and uh, in the next video i will talk about uh, factoring of receivables and then we will i will make one video in which we will uh, practice certain questions related to receivables allowances methods direct right of method and factoring of receivables and then i will make certain videos for notes receivable how to deal with the short term notes receivable and long term uh, notes receivable if you really like my video uh, please uh, don't forget to subscribe to the channel if you have any question you can ask me through the comment section see you uh, everyone in the next class thank you so much bye bye